My next guest lost his mother, Sophie Toscan de Plantier, 27 years ago when she was tragically murdered just a few days before Christmas at her holiday home near Skull, County Cork. Since then, he has not only had to live with the heartbreak of her loss, but found himself fighting for almost three decades to bring her killer to justice. Last week saw the death of the chief suspect here in Ireland and a man also convicted of her murder in France, Ian Bailey, bringing to an end another chapter in a never-ending story of loss and pain for Sophie's family. Here to share his thoughts on his mother and the developments in a case that has gripped Ireland and the world, please welcome Pierre-Louis Baudet Vigneault. <laughs> Pierre-Louis, welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for you. coming to see us. Thank you for inviting me. I know there's been a lot of difficult days since your mother's death. How have the last few weeks been? for you guys and your family? Well, uh, it's been now more than uh, 27 years uh, since my mother was murdered uh, in Ireland. So, a few days uh, more, a few days, uh, it's okay. But, uh, of course, uh, uh, I've been, uh, you know, it was like a shower in my head. Uh, but uh, now I feel okay, back again. And. You say you feel okay. How did you find out the news that Ian Bailey was dead? Uh, actually, uh, my, my phone ringed a lot uh, and uh, on the Sunday afternoon when I was with my kids. And so I see some text from journalists uh, with, the, with this uh, new news. And uh, uh, I was completely, it was like a shock for me, you know. Uh, I've been fighting for 27 years, I said before, and uh, it's like a game over. It's like, finally, there is a game over. There's no happy end, but it's a game over. It's a moment that you can't really prepare yourself for. No. Um, was the initial reaction, was it relief? Um, honestly, I was dreaming about that because uh, you know, well, uh, I'm very, I'm very sensitive on, on this subject, of course. And my first reaction was, uh, well, uh, I need to sit and, and to digest this. And, I, uh, and okay, uh, it, now we will have peace again on, on, in Ireland, especially, and in my head. You know, uh, I think when you when you are a, a box fighter and the bell ring, and even if you lose or win, okay, it's over. And I was like, like the boxer. A sense of relief. The ring of the bell. With the passing of time, um, things don't get easier. 
Mm. Um, I know that your grandparents are still alive. Mm. Um, how did they feel when they heard the news that Ian Bailey was dead? Um, they are not in a very good wealth now. So we didn't say it to them because, well, my grandfather was uh, in the hospital. Uh, and so I didn't find the time yet to, to tell them. And I'm very frightened that they were keeping good, well, as good as they can until now. And I'm very frightened that this news will will give them peace and, and they will pass away. So, well, uh, I don't know how can I can... I, I still didn't manage with that. It's a difficult decision. It's a difficult decision. I have to... We have to... We have to, to, to tell them, but uh, still not. After the past few weeks, how certain are you that the person that killed your mother is now dead? Yes. I'm, well, you know, uh, I've been uh, in the file for so long, uh, maybe 15 years, and uh, well, I, 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 I went to the Paris Criminal Court uh, in 2019, and I've been sitting in the, you know, in this court for five days, eight hours a day throw the file with, uh, with the judge, with all the professional, with the policemen, Irish policemen coming in and spe speaking what they're feeling, what they know, what they see, what they... Uh, so I am 100% sure uh, the Jan Bailey was convicted murder in Paris for 25 years of prison uh, they are professional, you know. Uh, they spend an, an, an investigation for almost 10 years in France. Uh, French justice is not uh, justice for, for the kids. Well, we, we have one of the well, most famous uh, justice in the world. First con constitution, les droits de l'homme. Uh, <laughs> So we are, it's very serious and they, for me it's important that uh, at least he's been convicted murder once. Um, it's important, it's important. So there were no justice really, but he has been convicted murder. Ian Bailey protested his innocence until his final days. Yeah. Um, how does it feel that he was never convicted here in Ireland? Yet. Because uh, the investigation in Ireland is still on the way uh, for, from, 25, for, from 27 years. So, well, uh, the, the cold case, the serious crime team uh, is working on, the, on this file for um, more than one year. And the investigation is still going on. So it means that uh, uh, we cannot say that he was not convicted in murder in Ireland. He was not convicted in murder for murder yet or, or not, but it's still going on. Um, how frustrating was that for you? It's a shame. It's a shame because, uh, you know, all the light uh, are on Jan Bailey from the very beginning. Uh, I had policemen uh, maybe 15 years ago. There were uh, a policeman, an Irish policeman, working on the case at the very beginning and was going to be retired. And he bring me, he hugged me and he was crying in my, in my shoulder, saying, Pierre, I, I'm sorry I didn't succeed because Irish system is blocked. And, but I promise I did my best and Bailey did it. And, and he was crying, crying, you know, with the, with the tears on my on my shirt, so uh, it's a long, it's a long way. It's a long way. It was it was free, and uh, that's a shame because you know uh, Ireland refused to extradite uh, Bailey to France, even if 
we are brother fr France and Ireland. We 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 sign agreements in Europe to for mutual justice. The with the, the refuse to extradite him to France with no even uh, uh, no elements, no no reason. Uh, so that's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. And uh, you know when. I, I still go in in my house, in the house of my mother in Ireland, three, four, five times a year with my kids. And even if I was sure that Bailey was the, the murderer before the, the court in France. Was there ever a point in the 27 years for a second that you thought Ian Bailey might be innocent? Well, from the very beginning, I didn't know. The police were saying to us, well, uh, we, 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 we know who is it, who, who, who is the, 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 the murderer. Uh, we need time because the Irish system is this way. And so I didn't know at the very beginning. But for 15 years, you know, he said five times to people that he did it. Uh, he has no alibi. Uh, he was... Uh, uh, on the on the crime scene, uh, just after the police saying that he, it was a murder, uh, uh, he has pictures of the same crime. Uh, even if no journalists were allowed to to come uh, to see it, he, well, there is a lot of evidence. Tell me, you are you are Irish. Do you know someone who burned his clothes on the 25th of December? Uh, is there anyone in Ireland who, who used to do that? Is, uh, there is a legend to do that? Well, so there, is, there are so many evidence, but not five, there is hundreds. And uh, I don't know why Irish system didn't succeed and, and I hope maybe now he passed away they will be able to end this story because this land Irish people must end this story. You you you, you said just before it's a never end story but you must end this story for the right of the woman, for the right of the people who have someone killed in their family. You, 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 well, it, it's, a, it's a human right. You, you must end this story. There's so much media attention on this case. There's been mm. TV shows made, there's been podcasts made. How does it feel to have your mother turned into some type of character uh, and for your family's pain to be someone else's drama? It's strange because now my, my mother is more like a legend or a ghost in, in Ireland, in, in all the people's mind. How would you like her to be remembered? Uh, like a free woman, a free woman, you know? She a, was, free, a, free, she, a free spirit. A free spirit. She was French and when she was 31, quite young, she decided to to buy a house in Ireland. She has no money at this time, so she, she, uh, she put money, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and she, she succeeded and, and, and she made her dream to have a house in Ireland and just to be alone, to be free. So maybe her mind and her legend can be free again. So. This is the game over of this case. Now we can feel back to, the, to this free woman. You mentioned your mum coming and buying the house. Uh, you still have the house. Yeah. Um, what's it like coming back to the house that your mum was killed in? Um, How has the house changed? Uh, how have you changed coming back here? For me, it's not the place where she was uh, killed. It's the uh, air paradise. It's the place where she lived. Yeah. So it's the very good way for me to, for, for my kids to meet their grandmother and even for me to be like in the, 
the cocoon she, cre she created. And uh, so I feel, I feel so good there. I feel so good. I feel, I feel confident. And even until now, I, I feel protective, you know, because uh, like if it, it was in my mother, uh, 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 cover, you know. So it's a very little and tiny house, remote, and it's it's a little paradise. And uh, so now we we, we 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 can really enjoy this place again the, the way that she used to. And, and and really, you know, because. When I when I read the media or uh, I listen to the media, you know there is so many people saying, "Well, uh, Bailey was not." Uh, there is uh, other uh, rumors or stories, but who there are for telling that? You know, did they go uh, through the files? Are they judge? Are they professionals? Bailey was convicted in murder in Paris. The, the investigation in Ireland is still going on. Um, I'm very confident. So um, it's it's uh, we, we 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 must end this story, really. Skull is a very small community. Yeah. Um, you have a house there. Ian Bailey lived there. Um, what was that like coming back? Did you ever bump into him? Did you ever see him? Yes, uh, I've saw it. I've seen it. Uh, three times. Uh, the first two times he didn't recognize me because we we crossed him in the in the street or at the supermarket. And the last time I was with my kids in the Skull Harbor, uh, having uh, tea and uh, ice cream. And I feel a look on me, uh, a look to me, look at me. And I saw someone, and he was looking at me with a dark look, with no empathy, nothing. Uh, like a devil regal, you know? And I, I was under shock because, well, uh, uh, it was before the, the, the Paris uh, criminal court, but uh, I feel. I felt so many violence in this look, uh, the, and that was not easy for me huh? to 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 go back in this in this house in this very uh, beautiful uh, village. But the killer take my mother' life, and I always think that he uh, he has no right to take my my life my life and my freedom. So I wanted to face it. And even for the Irish people, I'm facing this. I'm coming back. And my mother loved this country. Uh, it was her paradise. And I want to go on with that, to continue. You know, you mentioned coming back. Um, there's a lot of support for you here in Ireland. And I'm sure in the community down in Skull. Um, is it easier now coming back since Ian Bailey has died? It's my first time back in Ireland, uh, and that, that's that's not funny. But uh, when I, I took the the taxi from the airport for coming to the Late Late Show, the taxi was saying nothing. Uh, Irishman, old guy, maybe he's looking, he's, he's watching the Late Late Show, and when I pay him, and he said to me, uh, good for you, this bastard passed away. So everybody knows this story. It's, a, it's an Irish story, uh, and, but I received so many messages. So you have the divine justice. You succeed, Pierre. So I, I, think, I think even for the Irish people, especially in this very, very remote countryside, uh, they feel, they feel uh, well, it's important for them because there, were, there, there was a killer uh, still living there. And now uh, they were all convinced it's, it's, it's foolish, you know, it's very, they were all convinced. 
Now that Ian Bailey is dead, does this represent some closure for you? Do you think you yeah. can get on with a different life? A different life, and that's part why I accept your invitation to the Daily Show, because I wanted to, to say to all these people here that we must turn the page. Uh, this is a game over of this case. There is no happy hand. And uh, we, I am free again here in Ireland. And I don't want any more interviews. I don't want any more pressure on, on... It's the end of this story and, and another uh, story now and, and a peaceful story. You're talking about a peaceful story there. I know you bring your kids back now yeah. to Cork. Yeah. Um, we've got a little picture of them here. Tell us who we got. Yeah. It's in Bantry, last April. We played golf in the Bantry Golf Club. My daughter is called Sophie, like uh, her grandmother. And who's this cheeky guy here? This cheeky guy is, uh, is Louis. And uh, they love the place. Uh, they, they feel, they, they feel the, their grandmother here, for sure. The aim, yeah. We've talked about the past tonight. We're looking at the future on that screen. Yeah. Um, on behalf of everybody here in Ireland, I genuinely hope, Pierre-Louis, that you find some peace and you find some truth. In the days ahead, we wish you the very, very best. Uh, thank you so much for coming to see us. Thank you very much.